I want to continue this Thank conversation you. on the other side of the aisle. Joining me now, he's the chair of the Senate Republican Policy Committee. It's Roy Blunt of Missouri. He's also a member of the Intelligence Committee. And let me pick up on holding Putin accountable, Senator Blunt. I go back. You saw here, and, you know, mm -hmm. there has been plenty of attempts. It hasn't worked. Um, is there a better way to hold Putin accountable that we haven't tried? Well, as Chairman Warner pointed out, we did see uh, in the 2018 elections where we really did push back. Remember 2016, as late as early 2017, we had cyber defense capabilities, but we didn't have the authority. The, the, the president had never given the authority for cyber offense. Uh, and so when we did push back, we pushed back pretty hard in 2018, uh, it stopped. I think to some extent, uh, Chuck, you really have to treat uh, Russia like it's virtually a criminal enterprise. Right. Uh, they, they harbor criminals, they, they, they don't appreciate the rule of law or any kind of level of personal freedom. Uh, and, and I do think we have to push back when there's no, no penalty, there's no sanctions. Yeah. Uh, you've hard to find who's doing it. Even when you can find where they are, we haven't really effectively sanctioned the companies, the countries that are uh, protecting this kind of activity. Uh, it has to stop. On one question you ask uh, uh, Chairman Warner, could we say that companies have to s guarantee their system uh, to be a U.S. vendor or whatever the right. other guarantee might be. The truth is, we haven't we haven't been able to, to guarantee our own system. You know, on the solar winds, they got in the government system as well. We didn't know where they were there. Right. We don't know how long they were there. We're not absolutely sure they're not there still. Uh, and so, you know, saying that companies would have to meet a standard we can't meet would be one thing. And let me make one other point on on the Colonial Pipeline. There was a very simple way in. They used an old uh, uh, account that was no longer even uh, a person who, that, that account was not even part of the system anymore, but it wasn't taken out of the system. There was a place where maybe a, a, a two-part authentication would made a big difference. We've worked hard on this both in Intel and in the Republican Policy Committee, yeah. trying to alert companies, but also our, our own colleagues, of how broad the danger could be here. And well, uh, I, I'm glad this is getting the attention it's now finally getting. It took gasoline look, and beef. Well, that's right. Uh, and for it's, us to it's think when it hits, this is really a serious problem. That's right. No, when it hits the, when it hits people at home, and that, I think this is one of those things. This feels like a crime wave. And you guys are supposed to keep us safe, right? You're, you're our elected officials. You guys got to keep us safe. So I guess I want to push back on this idea that you, you can't hold business to a standard that the government can't meet. Well, why can't everybody be mm -hmm. mandated to meet this standard? I understand what you're saying about the government, but the 2012 cybersecurity bill, it, one of the reasons it didn't pass is because there was this debate. You were asking too much of private, private sector. I think that was one of the reasons you were not ready to support it then. Shouldn't we be asking American business to do more? Well, I, I don't remember the 2012 cybersecurity bill. I do remember at that same time, Senator Carper and I were actually leading the effort to try to have reporting as part of the requirement. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of pushback. Nobody wanted to report that they had been hacked. Uh, that was a, a fight we've been having now for almost a right. decade. Uh, and the only way you can begin to get on top of this is to know how pervasive the problem is, try to develop a pattern. Right. Uh, this uh, crypto uh, currency, uh, not, uh, not allow that to be just in behind the scenes in the entire system. We have a lot of cash requirements in our country, but we haven't figured out in the country or in the world yeah. how to trace cryptocurrency. So one, fairly easy to do. People almost always pay the ransom. There are very few consequences, and you can't trace the the ransom where the ransom right. payment of choice now. And we've got to do a better job here. Oh, look, Vladimir Putin scoffed uh, at the charges that somehow he was behind these attacks, and then he went on to say something else over the weekend that was quite disturbing. He essentially praised the January 6th insurrectionist, or he seemed to say that um, it was nothing but a political dispute. Considering that Putin is now picking up on this as a way to divide this nation, does, does that make you reconsider your opposition to a January 6th commission? Because I, I know your argument against it right now. You think there's some bipartisan action happening. I get that. But you know we need as credible as of a review as we can to get on the same page as a country with facts. Don't you see the January 6th is doing that? Commission is doing that? 
You know, my yeah, my 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 point from not just last month, but from the very moment this uh, commission idea came up, I never said, you know, I'd, I'd be for it if it was more bipartisan. It was very non-bipartisan in the first proposal. I never said that. What I said was, I think we know what we need to do here, and a commission, in my view, uh, an immediate commission would slow us up in saying, well, we need to wait till we know all the facts. We need to wait for the commission. Uh, we will come up out with a bipartisan uh, two-committee report uh, next week. The Rules Committee that I was the chairman of, now the ranking member, uh, Senator Klobuchar and I on that committee, Senator Portman and Senator Peters mm -hmm. on the other committee. We're going to have a, a pretty extensive report on what happened, over a hundred-page report uh, with a significant number of recommendations, in my view, all of which could be put in place immediately. Uh, and my sense was it more right. important to act and get and do what we know we need to do than to get uh, in a position where we start waiting uh, for a commission right. uh, to come forth with the report that we, I think, are going to be happy. I think you're going to be uh, really uh, pleased with the report you see. And we'll see then where we need to go next after that report's out. Well, I want to talk, though, but I, I don't know if your report is going to deal with the root cause, right? The root cause is you have the leader of your party. You know, whether, you, whether everybody wants to acknowledge the former president as the leader of the Republican Party right now or not, he seems to be the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest fish in this pond now. He's had, as a chief of staff, was pushing the idea that Italy used military satellites to somehow rig the election, and, and he keeps doing this, and he did it last night in North Carolina. You're part of this group of Republicans that has stated that you don't believe in that nonsense, but you don't you don't really push back at the president for spreading these falsehoods so much. Are you not, do, do you fear you're not doing enough? I mean, one in f four people in your party believe these delusional things. Are you concerned about this? Well, I'm concerned we're losing faith in the election system. I do think it's important to have a, a bipartisan belief that the election system uh, does what it's supposed to do, that the results that are the results of Election Day are what absolutely uh, happened. You know, I served for eight years as the, as the chief election official uh, in my state. I was pleased to see uh, Senator Manchin have the same view that we need to move forward on election reforms mm -hmm. in a bipartisan way. Uh, I look forward to being a part of that. Uh, we'll see what happens with the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act and other issues I think we can deal with right. and deal with in a way that's less partisan and trying to create political advantage for either side. Do you think the president believes this stuff or is exploiting um, a, a chunk of your party into convincing them to believe it? You know, I, I really can't analyze whether he believes or not. I'm, I'm sure he believes that uh, in a fair election he couldn't have possibly uh, lost. And, and of course, he had the, the ability to go to court and prove whether that election was fair or not, that the, every, the courts did not uh, accept those, uh, those ideas. And so we move forward yeah. uh, and we continue to move forward. I do think uh, President Trump is an incredibly popular figure in, in, in our party, certainly in uh, a political figure in my state. I'd like to see him get focused on the 20 22 elections. There are plenty of things for Republicans to be talking about. It, I, I understand. Look, you're, the you're not the only process itself. Sorry, Senator. You're not the only senator or Republican that has said, "Hey, look, the guy's popular in, in the party, and, and there's only so much." I, the implication is there's only so much I can say or so much I can do to push back. I, it, it sounds almost like you're surrendering no, that's, to this that's nonsense. Not, you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not running for office again. I'm not running for office again. So that's not my point. My point is he's popular and can be incredibly helpful in 2022 if he gets focused on 2022 and the differences in the two political parties. The the uh, the Biden agenda is an agenda that uh, Republicans are going to be talking about defining themselves okay. based on our differences on things like what is infrastructure. There are a lot of things to talk about. I think 2022 has great potential to be an important and, uh, and good year for Republicans. Okay. And I hope uh, President Trump uh, puts his energy in that effort. Senator Roy Blunt, uh, as you mentioned, you're not running for re-election in 2022, but you are a Republican senator from Missouri right now. And I appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective with us, sir. Thank you. I am. Good to be with you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news. 
by downloading the NBC News app.